Today we're going to begin by comparing answers to the homework from two weeks ago. So this is page one of your handout. Number one, I know living at home right now, this should be, I am not living at home right now. Or I don't live at home right now. Number two, I be living in this city should be I am living in this city or simply I live in this city. Number three, student at this school is not a sentence. I think it's probably trying to say I am a student at this school. Number four, I am study English. You can say I am studying English or I study English. Wait, did we already do this? This looks very familiar. We already did this, didn't we? Um, Yes, because we did that one in class. I remember now. Okay, yes, yes. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so uh, page two. This is the homework from two weeks ago. So the first one the is, is already done for you. The second one, all of the windows in our house were broken. This is, okay, this one also is done for you. So number three, a lot of the people in my class work during the day and attend class in the evening. A lot is many people, so this should be plural and this should also be plural. Number four, many of the satellites orbiting the Earth are used for communications. Again, many is more than one, so this should not be uh, is, it should be are. Number five, the news about the long range effects of air pollution on the development of children's lungs is disturbing. This is correct. The news, even though it ends with S, is actually singular. It's one thing. It is a piece of news, so it should be is disturbing. This is correct. In English, there are some nouns that end in S, but are actually singular. Most of these nouns are fields of study, such as economics, Mathematics, statistics, basically uh, any field of study that ends in S is actually singular, not plural. And news is one of these. Number six, studying a foreign language often leads students to learn about the culture of the countries where it is spoken. The subject is studying a foreign language. This is one thing. We're going to talk about studying uh, this kind of verb, I think in two weeks. This is called a jeren, dongmingzi. It is always singular, dozi danshu. So this subject is always singular. This should be leads. Number seven. 
one of the most common names for dogs in the U uh, in the United States is Rover. Right, it says one. The subject of the sentence is one, so this should be is. Number eight, a number of planes were delayed due to the snowstorm in Denver. This sentence is correct. Even though the subject is number, we're not actually thinking about a specific number. It just means many. A number of just means many. So the real subject of the sentence is many planes. So this is plural. This is correct. Number nine, most of the mountain peaks in the Himalayan range are because it says most are covered with snow the year round, right? Most is more than one, so this should be R. Number 10, the number of passengers affected by the delays was great. This is correct. Because here the subject of the sentence actually is a number. The number is great, which means big. It's a big number, so the subject is a number. So it is singular and it takes an S. Number 11, 75% of the people in New York City live in upstairs apartments, not on the ground floor. The rule for numbers, if the number is exactly one, then it is singular and this is correct. If the number is more than or less than one, it is always plural. If the number is zero, it is plural. Every number except for one is plural. So 75% is less than 100%. So it is not one, therefore it is plural. Number 12, we are on page two. Approximately 76% of all the data in computers around the world is in English. This sentence is correct because the word data is uncountable. So it is always singular. Even though it is uh, less than one. When you can count something, then you should think about whether it is one or more or less than one. If you cannot count something, it is always one. Thirteen. Unless there are a profound and extensive reform of government policies. So this should be is. Because. First of all, it says a one. Secondly, the the, the actual subject of this part of the sentence is reform. You can count reform and this is one reform. Um, you can also reform can be countable or uncountable. In this case, it is countable because you have a a reform. In any case, in this sentence, it is one reform. So th this should be there is. In the near future, the economic condition in that country will continue. Right. OK, the rest is correct. Um, today we will talk more about this kind of sentence. There are in Chinese we call this yo yo yiga, but a lot of people will write there have, which is wrong. You should always say there is, there were, there are.
Yes, or sometimes there have been. Do we have more? Yes, 14. Still on page two. While I was in Paris, some of the best food I found was because food is uncountable. Same as the previous, the number 12. You cannot count food. So even though some is more than one, food is uncountable, so it will always be singular. Was not at the well-known eating places, but in small out-of-the-way cafes, right? Okay, do you have questions about page two? Dear you, hi, Oshanti, wait more. Anything went by too fast? You may jump quiet. Yes. Five. OK, let's take a look at five. News is always singular. Has it done? Yeah, so words, some words in English end in S, but are always singular. Economics, mathematics, news. News is always singular. News is done. So number five is correct. Is disturbing. Danju. OK. OK, other questions? OK, let's move on to page three. Number two, elephants are very basic. Number three. Or oh, sorry, another way to say this sentence is. The elephant is a large animal. Yes, so you can use plural all the way or you can use the plus singular all the way, but you cannot mix singular and plural. Number three, your heart beats faster when you exercise. You only have one heart. Unless you're a time lord from Doctor Who. Number four, healthy hearts need. Regular exercise, it is more than one heart, so do not add S. Right, number five. Every child in the class knows the alphabet. Remember, every means every single one, so it is singular. Every is meika, so it's a danshu. Every, everyone are all singular. Number six, some of the magazines. Some is more than one. Uh, and there's another one. Uh, some of the magazines at the dentist's office are two year. Mm, it's not how you type it. Years old. Some is more than one. Two is more than one. Both of these should be plural. Number seven. A number of the students in my class are from Mexico. As we mentioned in on the previous page, a number of is just means many. So this should be plural. Number eight, one of my favorite subjects. In school is algebra. The subject of the sentence is one. Out of many, one. E pluribus unum. It's the motto printed on US currency. So this should be singular. Number nine, there's many different. OK, so this should be there are many different kinds of insects in the world. Insect or insects, singular, plural, both make sense. Both are OK, but kind must be plural because it says different. One thing cannot be different from itself. There must be more than one. And if this is plural, then this should be are, not is. Theirs means there is, we want there are. 
sometimes you will see somebody write this. Bearer, kind of weird. Uh, this is not very formal, but it does exist. If you see this, this just means there are. Number 10, writing compositions is difficult for me because writing is one action, a gerund is one action, so this should be is. Number 11, the United States has a population of over 300 million. Unless you live in the 19th century, in the 19th century, the United States was plural. Uh, because literally it is united, many states that have been united. So in the 19th century, they often said these United States. But here in the 21st century, the United States is just the name of a country. It is one country. So it is singular, the United States. Although sometimes when you see the president of the US make a speech to be like more formal, he or hopefully she sometimes says these United States. Um, but today we mostly say the United States. Number 12, most of the movie takes place in Paris. Again, it is one movie. No matter how much or how little of it, it is one movie. Number 13, most of the people in my factory division like and get along with one another. But a few of the workers don't fit in with the rest of us very well. So most, right? More than one. So it's like and get plural. A few of also uh, more than one. You cannot have a few of one thing. It has to be a few of many things. So this has to be plural. And if this is plural, this does not have an S. It, it's, it is simply uh, don't. OK. Do you have questions about this section? 12, right. Yes, you can. Uh, the difference between singular and plural only exists in the present tense. In the past, in the future, singular and plural look the same. OK, OK, other questions? OK, let's move on to the next section. Same page. Harry's birthday is tomorrow. He will. We're going to talk about this next week. You never make the word will plural. It is always singular. Will be 50 years old. Number two, the store will stay open tomorrow night until 11 PM. Um, as I just said, the difference between singular and plural only exists in the present tense. In the future tense, it is always the same thing. It looks like plural. Number three, 17 people will be at the marketing meeting. Uh, right, it's uh, was, is, will be. We must look at will be as one word. So you would not add anything in the middle. Number four, the new senator will make her first speech in Congress tomorrow. This sentence is correct. Number five, our teacher will not or won't be here tomorrow. Number six. Will you call me tonight? This sentence is correct. Don't you dare call me. Do you have questions about this section? OK, next page, page four. We did this, right? 
Yeah, we already did this one. Uh, so page five. Have we done this? Yes, I think we we did this. D did we do page five? Yes, OK, so. Um, by the way, I went back and added the rest of the bottom of page five and there's nothing there. Um, if you remember, it ended here, right? I wasn't having any reason. It should be I didn't have any reason. And the last two sentences are correct. Any reason to worry? Today we split everything 50-50. Uh, the only complaint I have is that Sejun snores at night. I guess I'm pretty lucky. This is all correct. Page six. Have we done this? Yes, yes, OK. Yeah, I remember this. OK, the Rome thing, born in Rome. Um, yeah, yeah, I remember this. OK, so page seven. We've done this, right? No, I don't think. Have we done page seven? No, OK, so let's do page seven. Number one. I haven't been in this town very long, or some people will say for very long. I came here just two weeks ago. Two weeks ago is in the past, so you would use the past tense. Um, in this case, the first sentence uses the perfect because it is in relation to the second sentence. Therefore, the second sentence does not need to change. Um, you can, logically speaking, the second sentence comes first. First, you have the simple statement, and then you have the statement that is related to it using the perfect tense. Um, so even though the sentence order is wrong, the logic is still correct. Number two, dormitory life is not quiet. By the way, notice how I said that word, dormitory. Not dormitory, dormitory. In English, this O does not make a sound. Like the word, how do you say this word? Memory, memory, memory. How do you say this word? Sophomore. This O does not make a sound. And if you don't believe me, you can check a dictionary. Sophomore. Right, OK. Dormitory life is not quiet. Everyone. Shouts. And makes. A lot of noise in the halls. First of all, it is present tense. So this should be in the present. Secondly, everyone is. Singular. So this should be shouts. This should be makes. It could be. So the question is, what if the whole thing was in past tense? That would also make sense. It's just a different context. Uh, in the present tense, somebody is telling you their experience about dormitory life. In the past tense, somebody is telling a story about dormitory life. Number three, my friends will meet me when I arrive at the airport. So uh, you already have the future tense here. If you add a future here, then this this would be the future of the future, and it's not what you're trying to say. Like first you arrive and then your friends meet you, right? So this happens first, and then the first half happens. Number four. Hasn't anyone ever told you to knock on the door before you enter someone else's room? Didn't your parents teach you that? OK, so it's a question, so the order is kind of mixed, but it should be has plus the verb. 
the verb is tell. Tell, told, told. Past perfect is told. So has told. The second half. Uh, the word did already tells you this is the past tense. So you don't need to make the main verb teach into the past. This should be present teach. 一个字扛一个概念, Number five, the phone rung while I was doing the dishes. I dried my hands and answered it. When I heard, like Amber heard, my husband's voice, I was very happy. So the word rung tells you this sentence is in the past tense. So anytime you see a present tense in this sentence, it should be in the past. Doing, as we learned, the present perfect has to have a be verb. I was doing. Uh, and here this is not progressive. Um, there is no interruption of listening to the husband's voice. You don't need to emphasize that it is continuing. So it is a simple past. Uh, so two weeks ago, we talked about how the progressive aspect is used when you want to emphasize something is continuing and often something else interrupts. Here, nothing is interrupting. Uh, this action. So a simple past is enough. I heard. Yes. Yes. So uh, the difference between while and when. In terms of time. Is a matter of emphasis. How hard do you want to emphasize that you were in the middle of doing something? If you really want to emphasize that you were in the middle of doing something, you can use while. Now, the word while has many other meanings that we can talk about later that are not related to time. OK. OK, number six. I'm oh, sorry, here, so the adjective needs a be verb. I was very happy. OK, number six. I was. That's not right. I have been in the United States for the last four months. This is why it's have been, it, because there is a period of time. Uh, and if it was an action, you would use the present progressive perfect. But B is not an action. It is a status. So you can only use the present perfect. For the last four months, during this time, I have done many things and, saw, and seen many places. The sentence is in the present perfect. So this should also be present perfect. Uh, in this part of the sentence, you use the same subject for two verbs, right? Do and see. Therefore, the tense and aspect of these two verbs must be the same. So if this is present perfect, this should also be present perfect. Uh, and we can omit the repeated have. Have this is from full case under. Number seven. When the old man started to walk back to his hut, the sun had already hidden itself behind the mountain. So the sentence is in the past, right? Started. So this should be past perfect, had, and then the past participle of hide is hidden. Hide, hid, hidden.
Uh, and it, it should be the perfect aspect because um, this happens before the first part. So when the first part happens, the second part has already happened. You want to emphasize the relationship between these two parts of the sentence. Number eight, while I was writing my composition last night, someone knocked on the door. Last night, so it has to be in the past. Number nine, why? So there are two possible answers here. You can say, why are you writing a children's book? Or you can say, why did you write a children's book? It depends on the context. For example, if I am a best-selling author of mystery novels, and one day my wife, who doesn't exist, walked into my study and saw me drawing pictures and writing a children's book. She might stare at me incredulously and ask, why are you writing a children's book? Or maybe I am a best-selling author of mystery novels, but I wrote a children's book and it did very poorly. Nobody liked it. So maybe the next time I go on a talk show, the host will, will look at me right in the eyes and ask, why did you write a children's book? Such a bad idea. Depends on the context. Number 10, I'm really glad you are visiting my hometown next year. There are other answers. You will be visiting. You are you can even say you are to visit but that sounds very strange it's correct but it's strange yes there should be a that here it was omitted that really technically i don't encourage you to omit this that this should be here um but in in daily speech when you're talking people will often skip this that but when you're writing, I think you should always put it in. Yes. When do we need a. A comma. Uh, so you mean related to the word that? OK, when you see the word that. Ne never add a comma. Sometimes a comma will occur next to the word that that comma is unrelated. Oh, I said omitted Sandri. Yeah. Right. Right, so we don't need a comma here. OK, so. OK, we we will talk about commas in week. 14, I think. So if you can be a bit more patient, we will get there. But for in, in terms of this question, anytime you see the word that, if a comma is next to the word that, it is unrelated. It's there for a different reason. It's not because of the word that. Okay, okay. And we'll talk more details about that later in the semester. Number 11, while I was visiting it's a spelling error my cousin okay so sometimes you will see the last consonant will be repeated when do you repeat when do you not repeat it depends on the stress if the last syllable is stressed then you repeat the last Consonant. 最后一个字音就要重复. 
but in this case, visit. The stress is on the first syllable, so you don't need to repeat the T. While I was visiting my cousin in Los Angeles, we went to a restaurant and ate Thai food. Was visiting, so this is the past. Went, therefore this is eight. Number 12. When I was a child, I viewed things from a much lower height, as we all did. Many physical objects around me appeared very large. When I wanted to move something such as a chair, I needed help. The whole thing is in the past. Um, and this is telling a story. Each sentence in terms of grammar is unrelated to the other sentences. It's simply one thing after another. So you don't have to emphasize any relationship between these sentences, you can simply use the simple past tense. Number 13, when I was in my country, I was afraid to come to the United States. I thought I couldn't walk outside at night because of the terrible crime, but now I have a different opinion. You, you, uh, this is the same rule as uh, for the word think, right? If I say I'm thinking, that means I'm not sure. If you say I'm having an opinion, that means you're not sure. But I think in this case, the author is sure. So I have a different opinion. I live in this. I have lived in this small town for three months. I've been living, I think would be better. Again, aspect is a matter of emphasis. So do you want to emphasize that you've been here for three months or do you want to emphasize that you have continuously stayed here for three months? Grammar, in either case, the grammar is correct. It depends on which part you want to emphasize. For three months and... Uh, Ah, so in this case, there is a grammar limitation. Because it's there are two verbs. The second verb is should be um, learned, have learned. Uh, if you, you 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 cannot say I have been learning that there is very little crime here. You can, but it doesn't fit the idea. The idea of this sentence is the author has been staying here for a long time and they have come to a conclusion. And the conclusion is that there is very little crime here. So learn means come to a conclusion. So the word learn should not be continuous. That being as it's issued, right? You have already reached that conclusion. The learning part has ended. Now, the structure of the sentence is again, uh, one subject, two verbs, live and learn. Therefore, the grammar of these two verbs must be the same. So if the sentence ended at three months, you would have two choices for the verb live. But because the sentence also has another verb, and this verb only has one choice, therefore your first verb can only make the same choice. 听懂举手。好，我用中文讲一遍。所以，如果你只是讲 live 的部分的话，你可以用完成式，可以用完成进行式，看你要强调的是住了整整三三个月，还是持续在这边待了三个月，看你要强调哪一个。但是，因为它是一个主词，然后接两个动词，它是复合句子，复合句子的动词词态要一样。那第二个动词 learn 是学习，基本上就是得到一个结论的。他下面下面这边就是他的结论，既然已经得到结论了，他学习已经结束了，你就不能强调他的持续性，因为已经完成了。学习完成才有结论嘛，如果你学习还在进行中，你不会得到一个结论，所以这一定是完成式。那因为复合句子两个动词时态要一样，所以前面这个也必须是完成式。呃、uh, ，because this one has two choices。
but this one only has one choice. OK， 好，这样有听懂举手？为什么举手人变少啊？你叫我用发文讲吗？好了，那个回去重看影片，多听三遍。OK， do you have other questions about this section？ 好， moving on， next page， page eight。这个没做过吧？没有 ，OK，OK、okay, okay,。So number one, Citizen Kane， 大国民 ，is a great classic movie. I have seen it ten times. There's no reason to emphasize continuing to watch it for ten times. The point is how many times you have finished watching it. Number two, War and Peace is a long novel. I have been reading it for two months, and I am still not finished with it. So here you do want to emphasize, first of all, you, it is continuing for two months, but you also want to emphasize that the time is ending now. Up to now, it has already been two months. So you want the progressive and you want The perfect, so it's perfect progressive. Number three, our guests left yesterday. Oh, this is the one. Sorry. Do we have to change classrooms again? I'm joking. Number four. Uh, so. Number three, there is no relation to any other sentence. You don't have to use some kind of aspect. The simple sentence is enough. Number four, we have been studying all night. Let's take a break now. Again, you want to emphasize how long it has been. So it is continuing and up to now, how long has it been continuing? So it is present perfect. Number five. Let's not leave yet. I have been having uh, such a wonderful time at this party. So let's not leave yet. This is only something you would say. Okay, so this sentence is only something you would say. You would not write this sentence. Let us. Who is us? The person talking and the person listening. Putting these two people in the same sentence means it must be in the present. Therefore, this must be present perfect. I have been having. Okay, one more. We'll take a short break. Number six. By the time I got home, the rest of the family had eaten. Again. Uh, got home. Got is the past of get, so this is past tense. Let's take a short break.、Uh, when we come back, first we'll let group one present, and then we'll continue with the homework.
Welcome back, everyone. Today we have a very special program. Uh, we are going to welcome Group 1 to give their midterm presentation. I, they have very graciously allowed me to record their presentation. And in order to thank them for this, I may ask some questions after their presentation. So now let's welcome Group 1. Okay, so there's one of our group group mates over there who is about maybe once who is on the way to the blue. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Oh, there, ma. Okay. Oh, it's just. Oh, sound good, ma. No, no. Huh? Why? Yeah, ma. Sorry. No, no. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. So, but ma, show you. Okay. So, next, ma. Next, 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 next. Hey, this is the show. I didn't do anything. Yay. Okay, so I believe most of most of our group is here, right? Yeah, a second one. Okay, so yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are group one, and this is our uh, midterm presentation. Hope you enjoy it. And this is our outline. Uh, we separate into ten parts, which is a because we are a large group. So first of all, I'm gonna tell you that who are uh, who the group members are. Also, the word distribution. And our group member, by the way, hi, my name is Luxy Lupi. You can just feel me. Uh, feel free to call me Lux. We have Nana, Molly, Molly, are you there? Okay. Uh, okay, and Erin, and Amber, and Yuna, Emily, and Sarah. Our work distribution and also the chapter distribution. Well, because we are chapter one and we just view a little bit saying that we have only three pages to separate to the 10 people. So it's very hard to separate it. So yeah, we separate into this part. So maybe you can, okay, that's it. Okay, so the, for the part one, I'm gonna pass the microphone. Okay. Hello, my name is Anne. And in this paragraph, it says, when we get to lax grammatically, in grammar, words take on meaning unintended by their speakers. In worst cases, on account of certain instances of disregard for grammar, um, we get into needless arguments with one another. And every such failure in the transmission of meaning makes society feel a bit less useful to us and less caring, which makes us feel a bit unheard. Hi, I'm Emily, and now I'll give you guys an example to talk about. Uh, sorry about that. Hi, Emily, and I will uh, talk about. I will give you guys an example to. Uh, I will give you guys an example to uh, to. To to explain and uh, why you have to use correct grammar. For instance, but want to wear a jacket, and and his wife says that being in such poor shape, it's mean, uh, but physical condition. But she's mean the jacket is in poor shape, while uh, refers to while refers to jacket itself. So as you can see, while using correct grammar is very important. If you uh, said with misplaced modifier, the meaning will be completely wrong. So next, I will hand this presentation to the next speaker. Hi, um, I'm Aaron. And the paragraph explains the difference between adding commas to or period to the row size that appear on the bridge. And suppose to adding a comma, which is to remind the person operating the plow cars to be careful with other vehicles. And if we add the period, which is to remind the vehicle to be careful of plow cars. And 
the bird company's president sent him a mail and he wrote, but I ran into Sven Johnson at the game last night. He said, "Bus practice, bus projecting is reaching all the wrong con conclusions," and I disagree. And next is part four. Hello, everyone. I am Molly. For paragraph four, that means Bond pay a lot of money to know the correct messenger. But Bang was not focused about that, so he get the wrong meaning about I disagree. If you get the wrong meanings about the meaning, you will feel awake, so know how it means and double check is important for messenger. Hi, I'm Nana. So I'm going to talk about by using good grammar can help us communicate better and can share our thought more clearly and avoid misunderstanding. For example, Bud co-worker asked him to help him with a project, but Bud is very busy, so he had to delay it until January. So uh, by making sure his colleague that he didn't forget about the project, he said January. But his coworker thinks uh, he is referring about the cold weather. Okay, I thought she was gonna help me. Okay, so mine is at part six. Well, as you can see, that our chapter provide a lot of sentences, and also which is me in the wrong grammar. You can see it because you guys are applying English students, right? So my chapter provide two sentences saying that. Okay, first of all. Uh, this chapter emphasizes that grammar and mismanagement sometimes is unacceptable, which means that, you know, like when we are speaking, no one cares about grammar, like most of it. Like, uh, but when you are writing, ex especially in the academic way, it is very important, also crucial, to focus on your grammar mistake. For example, this chapter provided one sentence Chester Muriel was Fed Secretary. Okay, as you can see, it's very hard to tell, like, like, Maybe one, like maybe the secretary is a food for the Chester Morial. You know, like just it means that Chester Morial. While 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 writing this means that one's gonna eat the secretary. You are not gonna eat a human, right? Because you are not Hannibal. Okay, so it, but actually, when we are gonna correct it, it shouldn't be like maybe like the Chester Mor uh, Morial was fed by secretary. That's a correct passive boy. Yeah, yeah, see? Yeah, so the lack of care of grandma does really harm. For example, the second example saying that, a miss Wells reason, okay, what's a whale? Well said, one day you died. Yeah, people will die eventually, okay? So you will write something for the future, your, maybe your overspring can really say, okay, who share the, who can get the house, who can get the money from your late dad or late grandpa. So a man's will write, written saying that my house should be divided even evenly between my son Carlos and my twins. It's very hard to tell, you know. Like usually the house should be like divided into three parts, like saying that. Okay, maybe it's a house, right? Uh oh. Okay, and you may maybe go. Oh gosh, this is this is very hard. Oh right, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna describe it. Like uh, the house should be like maybe one could get the 33 percent, one could get the 36 percent, one to get the 33 percent usually. But in this sentence, it means that divided eventually between my son Carlos and my twins. This sentence shows that okay, one son's called Carlos can get like 50, and my twins could get like 25 and 25. That sounds not fair, you know? Maybe okay, except this dad loves the Carlos the most. Okay, but usually not. They were not gonna happen. Yeah, so let's pass to the last part, the part seven. Hello, my name is Sarah. This paragraph describes the article communicate clearly was important because a common which out of place may cause a great misunderstanding in any article or treaty. In the end, Author Riley to explore more advanced grammar future for readers. Okay, so the last part, sorry, the last part is for our pros and cons. 
Okay, pros and pros and cons is that the uh, mirror and the mirror. For the pros, the chapter, I mean, like the chapter one, which adopts the casual terms, means that it's easy to read and you not feel that really kind of stressful. And also, the stories are really easy to understand. I mean, like because that's what they provide a lot of like, uh, maybe one day you will face to. But the cons is that some of the simple sentences are blend with the paragraph. If they were separated, like. Uh, separate a little bit, it will be easier for non native English speaker to read for more quickly. Because for me, I've been reading like a an hour and more to to analyze. That. Okay, so listener is describe this topic, and last sentence is describe another topic. So the accuracy of the words you need to ensure clarity. Okay, I know that this reader, this writer may be the native speaker. So maybe some of the words using is kind of like maybe he or she really want to be a little bit like more into a literature level. So usually some some of the words were so beautiful for me that sometimes a little bit blurry for two uh, minutes. Two, three. Thank you, group one. OK, I'm going to talk while I try to rescue my screen. No, OK, so um, group one today gave a very detailed presentation about their chapter. Um, but there are I, I do want to emphasize a few parts of their presentation to bring to your attention. One is that they began their presentation by. There we go, OK, they began their presentation by giving us uh, a very detailed outline based on their division of labor. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. After the presentation, you will fill out a peer review sheet. And if you want to give me that information, you can write it on the peer review sheet. Um, the other thing that group one chose to do is they chose to give every member something to say on stage. Again, if you don't want to do this, you don't have to do this. You only have to send at least one person to the stage. Uh, of course, if you do want to send everybody to the stage, everybody is welcome. Uh, and then one last thing, which is this presentation is about the importance of using good grammar. And I think one of the examples they gave us is uh, will help us understand this the best here how many people is this if you think it is three people please raise your hand if you think it is four people please raise your hand that's the point the grammar is incorrect so it could be three it could be four and that's what this group was trying to explain to us. Good grammar is important. So three people is my son Carlos is one person and the twins are two people. Four people is my son. Carlos. And my twins, four people. Depending on the grammar. Right, um, OK, and then I know I said the last thing, but there's one more thing, which is uh, I, I enjoyed your evaluation of this chapter. Uh, what I was hoping for is which parts do you think make sense and which parts do you think make less sense? In other words, which parts do you agree with? Which parts do you disagree with? And if you agree with something, can you explain that part in your own words? Um, I think everything on this page is true. Especially like the presenter said, maybe this was written by a native speaker who likes literature, which is true. It was written by an English professor 
uh, I think is an expert in like drama or something. So yes, it's it's, it's very literary uh, grammar book. Uh, but I hope groups in the future can focus on the the ideas. Which ideas do you agree with? Which ideas do you ag not agree with very much? OK, so thank you, group one. Next week will be group two. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. OK, uh, question seven. I was late for my nine o'clock class, so I ran all the way from my dorm to my class. Uh, this happens first, and then the second part happens next. So if you use the perfect tense here, this means you finish the second part, and then you do the first part, which is the opposite of this story. So a simple past tense is enough. Number eight, Mrs. Wong isn't in the hospital anymore. She left early this morning. Or you can say she has left. I, I think you don't have to use the word has. Um, it's true, it is because she has left that she is not in the hospital anymore. But if you think about this situation, when would somebody say these two sentences? Usually when somebody shows up at the hospital to look for Mrs. Wong and maybe they ask a nurse, is Mrs. Wong, which room is Mrs. Wong in? And the nurse will say, oh, Mrs. Wong isn't in the hospital anymore. That is the answer to the question. Which room? No room. The second sentence is not part of the answer. The second sentence is explaining the answer. Why isn't she in the hospital? She left early this morning. So actually, even though this is two sentences, each sentence belongs to a different idea. So really there, you don't have to emphasize the relationship between these two sentences. Uh, another way to say this is, um, these two sentences are not part of the same story. This first sentence is answering a question. The second sentence is telling a story, so they don't really belong together. You don't have to use perfect aspect to emphasize their relationship. Number nine, I was born on February 29th in 1960, a leap year. February 29th occurs only once every four years, so by the time the 21st century began, I celebrated. OK, I had celebrated only 10 birthdays. Fun fact, when this textbook was written, the 21st century had not yet begun. So at that time, this was incorrect, but today this is correct. Um, and it's saying by this time, I finished 10 birthdays. So, and then the tense is past tense, so it should be past perfect. Number 10. A, are you still on the telephone? Are you holding on for someone? B, yes, I am. I am still holding for the technical help department. I have been holding for more than half an hour. Again, this is where you want to emphasize the length of time up to now or up to whatever moment in time. So you would use the perfect progressive. OK, do you have questions about this section? OK. Um, did I ask you? I asked you to do this part, right? 
Yes, OK, cool. So. Solange grew up in Brazil and she misses it when she was a teenager. She didn't used to here. She didn't used to. You already have the past tense here, so you only need. The present tense. Didn't used to. One time past tense is enough. Study very hard at school. Instead, she this was in the past, right? So she went to the beach every day and had fun with her friends. Solange for 10 years, so has been married is fine. To be is a status. It is not an action, so you do not have to continue the action. B is a state, so has been married to Ty, who is American for 10 years. Solange and Ty have two children, Ava and Jacob. Solange wants to show her home to her family. They would have gone. OK, this is a bit hard. I think we'll cover this in like week 11 or something. Uh, but very quickly, this is a counterfactual. But unfortunately, they had to call off the trip, though they had been planning it for months, right? Four months. They spent months up to this point planning. So it's a uh, perfect progressive. So I hope that they can go next year instead. And then. Next one. Hey, Cheryl, how are you doing? Good. I've been traveling all over the country for work. By the time the summer is over, I will have visited ten cities. So by the time the summer is over, this is in the future. By that moment, I will have finished visiting ten cities. So you want the perfect tense, a uh, perfect aspect. So in the future, perfect aspect, future perfect. And I'll have been traveling. For three months straight. Again, you are emphasizing a length of time. Usually this is. Perfect progressive and it's still in the future. I will. So it is present. Uh, sorry, future perfect progressive. Straight means without interruption. Wow, that's a lot. Do you? This should be did. Or I guess will 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 you come to New York? Two, because this is again in the future. Will you come to New York too? Yes, actually, I'll come to New York next week. OK, so this should be. Uh, I'll go to New York. She is currently not in New York. Or, um, A, this person is in New York. That's why this person says come. But Cheryl is not in New York yet, so she should say go. Like in true to Can we get together? Sure, call me when you get into town, which means when you arrive in town. Uh, when you sorry, when you get to town. Uh, get to means arrive at or arrive. A does not mean when you are about to arrive. They mean when you actually arrive, so you don't need the progressive aspect. It'll be great to see you. I will call you. As soon as I arrive at my hotel. So she has not yet arrived at her hotel. As soon as she does, she will future call. OK, do you have questions about page eight, this uh, bottom half?
OK, so let's talk about this week's content. The passive voice. Bei Dong Yu Qi. The passive voice is when instead of starting with the subject, you start with the object. Why would you do this? I, no, no, I want to keep this. There are some reasons. Sometimes you don't know the subject. So instead of saying like. Someone closed the door. You don't know who it is and you don't care who it is. Instead, you can simply say. The door is closed. So someone is the subject, close is the verb, the door is the object. If you don't care about the subject, you start with the object, the door, and then the verb is closed and you don't need the subject. Another reason why you might want to use the passive voice is because you don't want other people to care who did the thing. For example, I closed the door by accident. If I don't want you to think about who closed the door, I might say the door was closed by accident, and I don't tell you that I did it. So if you don't want people to pay attention to who is the subject, you can also use the passive. Finally, one last reason why you might want to use the passive is if uh, the person, you know the person, and there's no problem with who the person is or the subject, but it doesn't matter. So, for example, Again, I'm very bad with examples. Um, OK, OK. I open the door. With a hammer. Long tool. Now, obviously, if you open the door with a hammer, the door is now broken. So the point of the sentence is that you, you that I used a hammer. It doesn't matter who did the thing. The door was probably stuck. Nobody could open it normally. Somebody had to grab a hammer and it doesn't matter who did it. So in this case, if you don't, if it's not important who actually did it, you can say the door was opened with a hammer. So in this case, you are actually emphasizing the last part of this sentence. How was the door open? The door was opened with a hammer. My God. Uh, so these are the th three main situations where you would want to use the passive voice. If you do not have one of these situations, it's not a good idea to use the passive voice. It can be distracting. The reader might think you have one of these situations when you really don't. So how do you form the passive voice? We already have some examples. Let me give you the uh, actual way to do this. You take the original sentence, you flip the object and the subject, and in the verb, you add B and then the past participle of the verb. So. Uh, the toy was hidden. The toy is the object. And the original verb is hide. You add a B verb 
to tell you the tense 时间. In this case, this is the past tense. And then the main verb uses the past participle, 过去分词. So to review. These are the four main kinds of tense aspect and voice that we have covered so far. Progressive jinxing si is a be verb plus the present participle xian zai fen si. Uh, so this is the progressive. Perfect is a have verb plus past participle guo qu fen si. When you put these two together, you get perfect progressive. Have the first word tells you the tense. Have plus a verb in past participle. This is perfect. Be verb plus present participle. This is progressive. Right, so present. B plus ing progressive. Present. Have plus. Past participle is perfect. Present plus past participle plus present participle is perfect progressive. Now we have B verb plus past participle. This is. Passive. So in fact, uh, gr in grammar, this is called the passive voice. Previously, we talked about tense and aspect. This is the first time we're talking about voice. And the reason it is called voice and not aspect, is because you can combine it with a tense and aspect. So for example, uh, the toy was hidden. This was uh, our simple example. The toy was being hidden. Somebody was in the middle of hiding the toy. The toy has been hidden. Somebody has finished hiding the toy. The toy was sorry. The toy has been being hidden. Uh, for for example, 10 minutes. Somebody has spent 10 minutes hiding this toy. Um, so you can see that these are the four basic tense and as, uh, four basic aspects combined with the passive voice. Present perfect perfect progression. Yeah. So this is simple past. This tells you the tense. This tells you it's past tense. Uh, it, this tells you it's perf uh, passive voice. Past progressive passive past tense. B plus ing is progressive. And then B plus past participle is passive. So past, progressive, passive. Uh, present, perfect, passive, present, Perfect. Progressive. Passive. So far, questions? OK, there's uh, I think one more thing to tell you. 
Sometimes a sentence will have a direct object and an indirect object. So I gave my parents a gift. This really means I gave a gift to my parents. So if we use the first sentence to form a passive, this is very straightforward. Flip, uh, put the object first, right? So my parents. Then put the verb with a be verb and then past participle. So give, gave, given. And this is past tense, so. Were given. And then. Uh, sorry. This should be gift. A, a gift was given. The direct object is a gift. All right, so I gave a gift becomes a gift was given. And then the, you copy the rest of the sentence to my parents. Right? If you don't need to change it, don't change it. The problem comes when this sentence, right, with a with a two, right? This is very clearly another part of the sentence. Becomes this sentence where you have both my parents and a gift. But the solution is the same. Change what you need to change and keep everything else the same. So I gave my parents a gift. It looks like this should be first. So my parents, there's more than one parent. This is the past tense, so were given. Right, so I gave my parents, my parents were given. This part has changed. A gift does not need to change. So you keep it the same. Let's do another one. She sent me a letter. It looks like this is your main sentence. So you start with me. In this case, I. Sent is past tense. So be sent should be was sent, past tense. That's it. And the rest of the sentence stays the same. A letter. OK, finished. Questions? OK, so. That was fast. Uh, that leads to the difference between confused and confusing, right? Surprised and surprising. We talked about this in the first week. Let's talk about it one more time. I was surprised versus I was surprising. As we just mentioned, this is um, this is called indicative progressive. Indicative just means active, the opposite of passive. That's not right. No, active progressive. This is simple passive. 简单过去是被动语气。Right, so actually these are two completely different sentences. In this sentence, the subject is I. But in this sentence, the subject, we don't know. The object is I. So this can help you remember when to use surprised, when to use surprising. Whenever you see an adjective ending in ED or in ING, 
Think of the complete sentence. Who is doing what to whom? Who is the subject? Who is the object? If I was surprised, that means somebody is surprising me. Right? Somebody, subject, we don't know who, is surprising the object, me. OK, so I guess this should be me. But if I say I was surprising, then I am the subject and I am surprising. Let's say my boyfriend. For his birthday, right? That way you can see the whole sentence. Subject I. Verb was surprising. Object my boyfriend. Therefore, if you use surprising, it is always something or somebody is surprising another thing or person. So that leads to page nine. All of these questions are about that difference. So the first one. I am confused by these instructions. I am confusing by these instructions. If you think sorry. These instructions are confused me. These instructions confuse me. Circle the letters of all the correct sentences. OK, so there may be more than one correct sentence. I'll give you 10 seconds. Which ones are right? Which ones are wrong? 10, 9. Two, one. OK. If it's B verb plus past participle, this is passive. So the real subject is after the word by. So this sentence means these instructions confused me. This is correct. A and B, there's only one difference. This word, therefore B is not correct. C. These instructions are confusing me. This is an active sentence. The subject is instructions. The object is me. D. These instructions confuse me. This is also correct. Questions? Your thing don't use all. Good, good. OK, so uh, the rest of page nine, we have four more questions. I'll give you two minutes. It suddenly occurs to me that you may not be familiar with the verb interest. So let's do number two together. The word interest means make somebody interested in something. So in Chinese, it's actually the opposite. The history of civilization interests Professor Davis is correct. In Chinese, we would say, so the, the order is reversed in Chinese. So the history of civilization is interesting to Professor Davis. This is also correct. And therefore C is wrong because this is the only difference. D, Professor Davis, so the order has changed. 
this therefore should be interested. Professor Davis is interested in the historicization. To be plus ed is past uh, is passive voice. Okay, three more questions. I'll give you uh, one point five minutes. OK, number three. Think about who or what is the subject, who or what is the object. In this story, it should be the attention embarrasses me. So I was embarrassed by all the attention. Which is B, B is correct. All the intention embarrassed me is also correct. This is a trick. This is simple past tense. There is no be verb. So it has a jianan guo zhi. So this is correct. Number four, all the attention was embarrassing to me. Number four, this is shocking news. So this sentence is the news shocks uh, me. So this refers to the news. So the news is shocking. This is shocking news. So that would be B. B is correct. C. Now I is in front. I should be me, the object. The object has moved to the front. This should be passive. I was shocked by the news which is D, D is correct. Number five, this should be sports bores Fred. So Fred passive is bored by sports. Spectator sports are boring to Fred. This is right. This is active voice. Uh, present progressive active. So B is correct. C. Fred is bored by spectator sports. This is correct. This is also the most common way to use the word bored. And D. Spectator sports are boring to Fred. OK, questions about these four? OK, for homework, please do up to page.
13. Uh, please do up to the first two thirds of page 13. Page 13 has three parts. Please do the first. Uh, you can leave the third part of page 13. 请坐到第十三页前三分之二，十三页后三分之一，我们是下周进度。